Oscar Romeo Fuori, India Sierra Sierra, this is India, Kilo One, Sierra Lima Delta, Telebridge, Ground Station, calling for a scheduled Darius contact. Do you copy, Kate, over? India Kilo One, Sierra Lima Delta, this is OR4 ISS, you're starting to come in, still broken. Ok, Oscar Romeo Fuori, India Sierra Sierra, here is Claudio, India Kilo One, Sierra Lima Delta, good afternoon, Kate. Waiting to have uh, your signal loud and clear today. We are acting uh, from Italy as a telebridge station for iSpace in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Are you ready for the first question? Kate, over. And I'm starting to get your signal. Uh, still a little bit broken, but I'm ready to start the student questions. Over. Okay, go ahead, uh, iSpace. Hi, this is Joseph. What has been the most exciting part of your mission so far? Over. Well, we did two spacewalks, and that was pretty incredible to be in outer space on the outside of the space station. Over. This is Nicholas. After seeing all the places on Earth from space, which one do you most want to visit once you get back to Earth? Over. I think I want to go visit the Maldives. We can see beautiful beaches and crystal clear ocean water from there. Over. Hello, I'm Chris. What's your favorite part of the day? Over. Hey Chris, sometimes lunch is my favorite part of the day, but I also love any chance I get to look at the planet or to do science experiments. Over. Hi, I'm Sarah. I know you use animals and research. How many animals do you have in space with you right now, and how do you get, take care of them? Over. Hey, that's a great question. And we had some mice up here during our last SpaceX mission. We took care of them by feeding them every day and giving them water and making sure that they were safe and happy on the space station. Over. This is John. How do flying insects fly in space? Over. That's very similar to a scientific question that some investigators were asking earlier about can a spider jump in space and how does it make a web? So we do see flies fly in space when we have fruit flies up here and the scientists study their behavior pattern to see how it's different in microgravity. Over. Hi, this is Rashika. When you were preparing to leave high school, did you know that you wanted to be an astronaut? How did you decide what you wanted to do after high school? Over. 
Hi. When I was leaving high school, I actually wanted to be a biologist first, and so that's what I studied in college. I did molecular biology and virology, and I always wanted to be an astronaut, but I didn't think it was realistic. I took a chance, and I applied anyway. Over. Hi, I'm Jessica. Please describe your years of education and training that led to your assignment on the space station. Over. Hey, Jessica. Well, I got my bachelor's degree in molecular biology and my PhD in cancer biology, and then I was a researcher at MIT. After that is when I applied to NASA, and I had seven years of training before I got a chance to fly in space. Over. This is John. Do you practice emergency drills, and can you describe some of the critical incidents that you need to be prepared for? Over. Hey, John, we do practice emergency drills, and we had one, in fact, just yesterday. We prepare for fire, any kind of rapid depressurization of the vehicle, or an ammonia leak. Over. Hi, my name is Yoshiko. Will your stay in space get shorter if you have too many headaches? Also, if you have ever had a space headache, what did it feel like during and after? Over. Hi, that's a great question, and there are folks at the European Space Agency right now doing a study on space headaches. Unfortunately, we don't get to go home for any reason unless it's a major medical issue, so headache doesn't count. But I have had a few headaches up here, and it feels just like a headache on Earth. It hasn't been too bad, though. Over. Hi, this is Joseph again. What are the major research projects you are focusing on, and what discoveries have you made? Over. Hey, Joseph, that's a great question. We're doing over 200 different scientific investigations on board. Some of the ones that I've been most interested in is sequencing DNA in space and growing heart cells in space. So those two things I think are going to be the basis for all of our cellular and our molecular biology experiments in the future. Over. This is Nicholas again. Have any of the experiments failed or giving you totally different results than you expected? Over. That is a great question because some of the most interesting scientific findings happen from failed experiments or unexpected results. Just yesterday, I was testing a fluid container of 20 liters of fluid and seeing how it moved around inside of a tank. And it behaved completely different in microgravity than I thought. So with no gravity to carry it to the bottom of the tank, it coats the tank with some motion and settles in different areas of the tank with other motion. Over. Hello, Chris again. Do you prefer being in space or on Earth? Over. I'd rather be in space anytime. Over. Hi, this is Sarah. What has been your greatest challenge so far and how did you respond to it? Over. Hi there. I think spacewalking was the hardest thing we've done so far, but we have a lot of support from the ground. And the way I responded to it was by knowing that I had good training and that would carry me through. Over. It's Nicholas. Can you describe what your gravity feels like? Over. Yeah, it feels like floating in a pool. So anytime you guys are swimming, maybe close your eyes, plug your nose, and see what it feels like underwater. And that's what the space station is like, just without the water. Over. Chris here. Have you done a spacewalk, and how does it feel? Over. Yeah, we did two spacewalks at the beginning of our mission. And it feels amazing because you get a chance to see the planet through your helmet with no other structure around you. So you feel like you're flying at the top of the world. Over. Hi, this is Jessica again. What do you think the biggest advances will be in the space program over the next 10 years? Over. I think the most important challenge is all the work that we're doing in the space right 
now to understand what we need to know for human beings to need low Earth orbit. I think in terms of scientific discoveries, we're actually going to start to get a lot of results from all of the cellular and the molecular biology. And we're going to make some fundamental discoveries about human beings and about cells based on what happens to them in microgravity. Over. This is John. What are you most looking forward to when you return to Earth, and what will you miss the most from your mission? Over. I'm looking forward to some pizza, and I will definitely miss being able to see the planet and floating around inside the International Space Station. Over. This is Rashika again. Does your schedule ever seem repetitive? Over. You would think it could feel repetitive, but then every day we have a new experiment to do. I got so excited this last week about these tank experiments I was telling you guys about. I've never seen those before on board, and they were amazing. Over. One minute to lost. To the everybody in iSpace, please say a big thank you to Kate Rubens. Yep. Everybody give a big hand. Attention, Kate, uh, do you copy India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta? Uh, out, uh, ciao ciao from Italy. Thank you, India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta. Ciao from the space station. And Claudio, indeed, LOS? Yes, Brian, the, IO, the loss uh, is indeed, okay. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just shared a moment in history. Amateur radio station India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta at Casala Monferrato in Italy, operated by Claudio Ariade. India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta and his team just contacted Expedition 48 astronaut Kate Rubens, KG5 FYJ, aboard the International Space Station. Talk to students at iSpace in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Congratulations to all of the students involved, including those in the audience. Please give yourself one more big hand. Eris would like to thank again Dave Jordan, AA4KN, for his mentorship in getting iSpace in Cincinnati connected today. Now for the international volunteer team of Eris, including the radio amateur satellite corporations around the world, the American Radio Relay League, the CSA, the ESA, JAXA, NASA, and Roscosmos. This is Brian Jackson, amateur radio operator, Victor Echo 6, Juliet, Bravo, Juliet. Sending my greetings to all of you in amateur radio terms, 7-3, or best wishes. Jennifer, you could...